Triv, and that game definitely lived up to the hype there with CLG versus TSM. And I'm here to break down a play that happened in the mid game, which is actually a little bit CLG favored. It's where TSM didn't get the most favorable of engages here. And you're going to see as we start rolling this clip out, Lustboy, and we're going to have a vision toggle here. You can see on the minimap, they don't have full knowledge of where double lift is at this moment. And he's going to come over and pause it right here. He didn't see that double lift was in this area at all because of the way that their wards are placed on the minimap. And this is going to set up Lustboy because you're thinking, why is he right here? And why is he going to go here? There's no reason to go here when you see Zion Spartan was in this area and Poe Belter was here. And they also saw Lee Sin and Maokai on this side. So he wants to get a ward here to set up a TP play from Dyrus, who's been pushing bottom. So what's going to happen is Lustboy goes into panic mode. Luckily, he's barred. He gets to go through the magical journey. He gets to set up and engage. And Dyrus gets to TP into the fight anyway. So as we continue to roll the clip out here, you're going to see exactly that happen. Throws it up. Golden Age, maybe. But this is what happens. The ultimate comes down. TP comes in. But this gives Poe Belter the opportunity. And I talked about it earlier in the day that Azir needs prep time. You need to get your soldiers out. Well, Poe Belter gets to sit here, camping Lust Boy's body in the fight, just spitting out soldiers in one position that is not contested. Because the damage dealers are grouped together on CLG. They're not going to have any threat on them. Because the threat from C uh, TSM's perspective is actually going to be Zion Spartan in here. So Bjergsen's going to come in from the side. He's going to blow everything on Zion Spartan. They want to get him off the field as fast as possible. So when they start doing that, it's going to leave their damage dealers open, and Wild Turtle eventually goes down after this fight as we continue to roll it out. Perfect prep there from Poe Belter, just throwing damage out. Look at how uncontested Double Lift and Poe Belter are this entire fight. They get to jump around. Double Lift gets to go into the face of Santorin there. And Bjergsen, his damage output is really just skittering around the fight, playing around little windows where he can jump in, blow people up, and then jump out, which he didn't get a lot of this fight. And that fight actually trails off into a really nice skirmish afterwards where everybody's kind of low, overstays a little bit, and there are some misplays, but we don't have the rest of that for you here today because that was the bulk of that play in that engage. But now we're going to hand it off to the desk with Dash, who's got an interview ready for us. Thank you, Zyrene. I'm joined by Bjergsen, Lustboy, and Loco Doko after a very solid win. These games never seem to disappoint when you guys go up against CLG. There are plenty back and forth. So first to you, Bjergsen, as one of the longer standing, standing members of the team and this rivalry at this point with all the newcomers. Uh, you know, talk to me about once again being able to, you know, put the nail in the coffin over CLG there in one of these games. Um, it, it feels really, really good. We've been, we, like I said yesterday, we scrimmed against CLG a lot, and they honestly look like the strongest teams out of all the teams we scrimmed. And every single one of their performances in this last, like yesterday and last week, they've just looked so consistent and they've looked so strong. So I was pretty nervous going into this game because CLG just looked, they just looked really solid. It looked like it was really hard to really break them. So it felt good to be able to do that. Well, right. When we look at CLG, this split, you know, we we see them as a very strong team. So Loco to you, you the fact that they've started off the split so well, you guys had somewhat of a rocky start with your very first game against C9. Having been able to beat CLG here must feel pretty good in terms of the evolution and the building up of this organization or the team through this armor split. I mean, it feels great. Our mid game looked shaky in the game versus TIP and C9 and CLG's mid game looked really strong in the games they had. So I was a bit worried, but our boys really played well. Um, Lust Boy and Bjergsen played extremely well in team fights, and they were able to carry the fight through. Well, let's turn to Lust Boy here now. Fantastic bard play. You know, we've seen you play that champion before, but most people, after seeing it left up there, would have assumed that Aphromoo took it. You took it instead and made some, some pretty humongous plays. Was this plan from the beginning to leave it up and take it away? Mm. Before, 피칼 계획을 가지고 있었고 딱 마침 바드 피칼이 좋은 각이 나와서 바드를 피칼이 되었다. Um, Lust says we had it planned to pick Bard if the situation was right for it. Bard is a really hyped champion, so like the crowd cheers every time. Like so, we didn't pick it randomly; it was planned, and the situation came up, so we picked it. We saw some incredible flash cosmic bindings there that really turned the game around when we moved into that mid game where Loco, you were talking about CLG normally performs pretty well. There was one stumble for TSM 
where uh, CLG managed to take a Baron off and didn't look good for you guys, Bjergsen. What was communication like there in terms of getting yourselves righted as a ship and, you know, getting back into the groove of things and finally turning that fight in the mid lane? Um, I think we just all felt like we, we had a hiccup, we made a mistake, but still overall we have been playing the well that game and everyone felt confident in our comp later in the game. We had Sivir came out untouched in the early game and she just scales extremely well into team fights with the speed and the overall damage output. So we felt like our comp was going to outscale. Sure, they got a ban, but we can stall it out and they're going to have a hard time sieging. Now, Lust Boy, you were pretty instrumental in turning that fight as you had the flash over and you cosmic binding the Callista and the Azir together. You know, big plays like that provide a lot of hype to the team, but how do you manage to keep your cool because there was still another 10 minutes of, of gameplay to follow that? Um, he played over 100 games with a Bard in solo queue, so he's pretty confident about his queues. And he saw the opportunity and he went for it. He wasn't sure if the team could follow up because there was a lot of distance created by flashing and queuing, but he went for it because it was a really good opportunity to go for it. All right, well, and it absolutely did pay off. You know, Bjergsen, a more micro question here. Yesterday, you played uh, LeBlanc into his ear. You find yourself in that matchup again today against Poe Belter, and I just want to bring that up because this matchup, when we were looking at it, was going to be a big one. TSM, a pretty mid lane-centric team. CLG was looking to attack that mid lane a little bit. You didn't seem to have as easy of a, uh, of a time with the LeBlanc as your matchup today as you did yesterday. Um, I think in the majority of the lane, I had a pretty solid lead, like 20, 30 CS. And then I made one mistake of trying to roam bot lane while Pobolter was backing. And as I stepped on a pink ward and cleared that instead, I lost all the tempos since he backed. And he got the Morello, so I was still stuck on the Phoenix Codex. So at that point, he, just, he was just a lot stronger than me. And that's why he really got the lane control. So if I had played it better, I had backed around the same time, I would have more gold and I could keep that control in lane. So Pobolter just took very... He took advantage of my mistake and he did that very well very solid play from him in that regard now back to you loco when we look at you know the tsm clg rivalry and the the overall record now moving to 15 and 9 when we include uh playoff games in favor of tsm you guys have gotten the better of them the the last few times what do you attribute that most to because it always seems like clg looks incredibly strong going into the match but they fall short when they come up against you guys well <laughs> I mean, I just have, I would probably say our players, I think we have the most talented players on in NALCS. Bjergsen, Lustboy, by far the best players in their roles. Centaurin, really good. Turtle, Dyer is also really good. And our structure got better this season because we had one of our analysts, Parse, move into the house. So I would like to say our structure is better than theirs. I know they have a new coach and all that, but I feel really confident in our structure and our players. Well, Les Boy, talking about the structure, how do you as a player feel that the structure, the, the team, that you, the support staff that you have around you has helped you develop as an individual and as a team? Very good, very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good is good. Very said anything to add with that when it comes to the support that is lent to you guys through the, through the management and the coaches? Um, I think it, we've just been constantly improving overall since Loco joined, I think, almost a year ago. We've just really learned how to how the players should mesh with Loco and how Loco should mesh with the team and really how we should be towards each other. And I think that adding Parth in the house and also having our analyst Dylan online, it really helps out that we have pretty much every single side covered. They, as soon as they realize a mistake, like our mid game wasn't super, or it wasn't as good as it could have been against TIP, instantly they'll go back. They do a lot of prep work where they show us how we should go through this, what exactly should we do in the mid game with these kind of comps that we're playing. And Today, it showed our mid-game was a lot better, and I can't credit that to anyone but our coaching staff. Well, the structure is breeding excellence, no doubt. Once again, congratulations to all of you and the rest of the team on the win today. We are going to take a three-and-a-half-minute break before diving into Game 4 with TDK and Enemy Esports taking center stage. Here, we're going to get a look at Team Dragon Knights and Enemy arriving just a short time ago. Now, they faced off in the Challenger Series, but this is the first time they'll do battle on the LCS stage. So a big game for both of them to prove their worth and their, their, you know, their value in the LCS. Don't go anywhere. The action continues after this. It's, it's just this game is do not lose out of lane phase. 
If we group as five, we are going to destroy them, okay? All right, good luck, guys. And keep up the shot calling for mid game and prioritize the lead. Oh, they are on a double lift. Santorin flashes in for the knockup. Aframu, he's just getting tossed every which way and will finally go down. Calista? I'm on my way. Nice. Nice, 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 Okay, Afro. Okay, Afro, okay, Afro, okay, Afro, okay, Afro. You guys got him. I'm going to Afro. Nice. nice. They're TPing. Are we playing on the TP, on the TP, on the TP, on the TP. Nara, Nara, Nara. I'm just flash out. Nara, 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 Nara. He's rooted, he's rooted, he's rooted. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch the one. Sivir. I'm burying. Sivir, Sivir. Pobelter was just on the outside, but it's a triple kill for Bjergsen. The team was able to start kiting and make it happen. Santorin's into the back line. That's going to be Aframu going down very fast. Pobelter is low, and he gets popped by the Ignite. Team Solo mid takedown counter logic gaming.